Yeah, so thanks, Arkady, for a very interesting talk, close to my interest, even though I chose to, to talk today about something completely different. Thanks to the organizers for having me. It's my third talk in three weeks in Russia. So the previous two were in Sochi and around. So I really feel like I should be physically there, but it's difficult at this point. So what I'm going it, to talk- Just a second. Yes. Could, could you please zoom it out so that it fits in the screen? Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I ah, okay. think there was okay. the same problem with Arkady's presentation. So it might be something on your side. Yes, please go ahead. It's fine. Is it working? I could go out of presentation mode and into slides mode. So that could help or is it working? Okay, anyway, let me continue. So this is based on a series of papers with Aurel Sekal Halevi, who is here. So he's from Aurel University in Israel and Varu Tsuksampong at National University of Singapore, who might be joining later. So it's a series of three papers. One was in AAAI this year, two are about to be presented in each case. Uh, title of the first paper is Mind the Gap, Cake Cutting with Separation, and I chose it as a title for the overall talk. So since this is the first, possibly the only talk in this workshop on cake cutting, let me start with presenting the standard model of cake cutting. So by cake, I mean an interval, 0, 1, at least initially, at least at the standard model, but there's a set of N agents. A piece of cake is a collection of subintervals of 0, 1, Sometimes pieces are required to be contiguous, and the goal is an allocation of the cake to the agents so that each agent gets a piece, pieces are, pieces are destroyed. Right? So for instance, here we have allocated the entire cake to three agents. Agent one got a brown piece, which is not contiguous. Agent two got the yellow piece, which is not contiguous. Agent three got the pink piece. Okay, so the V agents have preferences over the cake is that they have valuation functions. Valuation functions describe the values they assign to each segment of the cake. So for in, so specifically, so valuations are functions uh, that are usually additive. So your valuation of a union of two pieces is your valuation of the first piece plus the second piece. Even though at some point in the talk, we'll also consider general monotone valuation. But typically in the cake cutting literature, they're assumed to be added. So they're normalized. So it's assumed that each player values the entire cake at one. And we assume that the cake doesn't have valuable pieces that cannot be cut, kind of these valuable nuggets. Right? So technically we say that the cake is divisible, meaning from each interval and each parameter lambda, you can cut off a lambda fraction of that interval. Right, so this is also called atomless. Okay, so this was the standard model. So what we do in this work is we consider cake cutting with separation. So we require contiguous pieces, which is kind of standard, but on top of that, we require that each two pieces allocated to two different agents must be separated by an interval of length S. Now S is measured in actual length rather than agent's values. So think of S as a physical barrier. So we came up with this model just over a year ago when social distancing restrictions were getting started, right? And that was indeed our motivation for considering them. Uh, right, so what you see in the picture here is a market, I believe in Germany, where social distancing restrictions are implemented. So different booths are allocated to different vendors, right? And two booths cannot be allocated directly next to each other. There should be some space between them. Right, and here's a selection of signs from around the world about social distance. And, but once we started thinking about cake cutting with separation, we realized it models a range of other scenarios. So for instance, in case of allocating processor time, with your interval being allocated is time, right, there may need to be a gap between time allocated to two different processes for the purposes of cleanup. Right? So especially if there may be some sensitive data there may be some fixed amount of time needed to do a sweep through the memory and deleting the data of one process so that the other process cannot see it. Right? And if you're doing free division of land, which is a topic that is of particular interest to Errol, so then when you're dividing land and you want to allocate two different pieces of land to two different agents, you may need to leave some gap between them. So one obvious access, one obvious reason would be to provide access to both clots 
right, the road between them. Another maybe more subtle reason to avoid cross-pollination, right, so that plants from one plot wouldn't pollinate plants on the other plot. But in both, in each case, so there may be some need for physical separation. Right, so this is what we're going to study. Okay, so outline of the talk is that first we'll talk about the standard model, which is linear cake, interval zero one, as introduced earlier. Then we'll talk about circular cake, sometimes also called pi in the literature, when our goal is to divide still one dimensional cake, but now closed into a loop. Then we'll talk about 2D cake, also known as land. Right? And then we'll talk about an object called graphical cake, where players value uh, sub intervals of edges of a graph. So the entire graph is a cake, and, and we're dividing not vertices, but pieces of the edges, if you will. So I'll, just, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail when we get there. Okay, so let me start with linear cake. And let's start with a simple observation that motivates our choice of solution concept. Now, perhaps the most common well studied solution concept for pair division is proportionality. Right, and proportionality means that each agent's, agent's value for its piece is at least one over n. Remember, valuations are normalized. So every agent values the entire cake at one, the n agents. So we ask that each agent gets one over n from his perspective. Right, and this is, in the standard setting, this is always possible. And in particular, this is possible by a moving knife protocol when a referee starts by moving a knife left to right along the cake, and agents are instructed to shout stop when the value under the knife becomes one over n from their perspective. Right, and then the point is that the agent who shouts stop first gets the piece under the knife, right? And the remaining part of the cake is valued at least n minus one over n by the remaining agents exactly because they didn't shout before that agent. Right, so we can continue in a recursive manner and guarantee one over n to each agent. However, this argument breaks down if we have separation. So look at this beautiful chocolate and cream cake with a piece of banana on top. And suppose we have two agents who are interested specifically in the banana. Uh, and now suppose that separation parameter S is actually quite large, more than the length of the piece with the banana. Now, if we are to allocate a, even a tiny little piece of the banana to the left agent, nothing will be left to the right agent and vice versa, right? So if you were to cut even here so that the agent gets even the tiniest slice, the rest of the banana would be covered by our separation parameter. By the way, you can also think of it as a blunt knife, a knife with non-zero bits that destroys the cake under it. So if you cut the cake with the blunt knife, we can't allocate banana to both agents. Right, so proportionality fails. Envy freeness, which is another popular but stronger solution concept, would also fail uh, kind of on the appropriate extension to the cake, to, to the separation setting. So the solution concept we're going to focus on for all settings we study is maximum fair share. Now, maximum fair share uh, is a solution concept defined in the first place about 10 years ago by Eric Bodish. Right, and it's a general, it's what an agent can guarantee to themselves in an extended cut and choose. So formally an agent's maximum fair share defined for discrete objects is how much utility an agent can guarantee to herself by splitting these discrete objects into n files and taking her least preferred file. Right, so an, ag an agent imagines that she's a cutter, that her job is to distribute objects into files Right, and then every other agent will come along, take some file, and she will be left with potentially the least desirable file. How should she split the objects to still guarantee herself something meaningful? So for instance, in this, in this example, an agent's maximum fair share would be six. Now, this is a solution concept that is studied, has been studied extensively in the fair division of these indivisible items. However, it has not been considered prior to our work, at least to the best of our knowledge, in the continuous case. And there's very obvious reason for that. If there is no separation, then each agent's maximum fair share is exactly one over it. Okay, so let's see, try to see quickly why that is true. Well, if you have an interval of value one, you have to cut it into n pieces, 
you can't guarantee yourself more than one over it. Right? Because kind of there are n pieces. It can't be that each of them is worth more than one over n to you. And on the other hand, you can certainly, if your cake doesn't have atoms, you can cut it into pieces of value exactly one over n, right? So your maximum fair share is one over n, and your maximum fair share can be guaranteed to you by the moving knife protocol, right? So exactly the same protocol will give you your maximum fair share, right? So it's simply not an interesting solution concept to study. It's effectively subsumed by proportionality. However, in our case, it becomes an interesting concept. Right? So let me first define it. So what is an agent's one out of K separated maximum fair share, MMS value? So this is what she can guarantee to herself by cutting the cake into K S separated intervals so that there's a separator of S between any two intervals and taking her least preferred interval. And in our case, this turns out to be a non-trivial solution concept, right? So you can ask yourself, so what would be an agent's maximum fair share in our previous example with banana and two minions? Okay, so what is it? Zero, right? So it's a much less demanding solution concept than proportionality, but typically still meaningful. And it turns out that for linear cake, we can actually guarantee it. Okay, so our first observation, and not a very difficult one, is that uh, even... Edith, uh, Edith, can I interrupt? Yes. I'm sorry, but I and I checked with some others, we don't understand the banana example. What was the problem? There was just a bit of banana, and they only care for the banana, right? Yes, they only care for the banana. So why, why, can't, they have, why can't they have one half of the banana with a big separation interval and one half of the banana to the other minion? What is the issue there? We no, but when, when, you're, when you're cutting, so you're cutting the cake, you don't get to move apart the two parts that you've cut, right? So when you, you cut it by removing an interval of bits S from the cake. Ah, okay, okay. So you are not uh, thinking of, uh, good, okay. It's just the color of the interval. In that place, the interval is very valuable and you have to create the space there. Okay, yes. if you create a space, it will take on the value. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thanks, thanks for asking. Right. right. Yes, I should have been more formal here, right? So indeed, so by cutting, I mean removing, for, removing from the interval zero one one a piece of bits S. Okay, so hope it's clear now. Okay, so first, first we have good news. Uh, given agents S separated maximum fair shares, we can actually compute an S-separated maximum allocation using order of n squared queries, right? So this is stated as an algorithmic result, but this is also an existent result, right? So it tells us that we can actually achieve that MMS allocation always exists, right? And it's stated as an algorithmic result in the sense that if each agent knows what they deserve in the MMS model, right? So then they can, then they can actually uh, guarantee that to themselves in an algorithmic fashion. Right? And an algorithm is again a variant of moving knife, except that now agents are supposed to shout stop when the knife reaches a point that the part under the knife is maximum fair share, right? And that part will that part will be cut off with a blunt knife that will destroy an S length of the cake. Right? And roughly by the same argument as for proportionality, this will actually guarantee MMS fair share to all agents. Right, and the number of queries is kind of standard for the moving knife protocol order of n squared and Roberts and Webb model. Right, so for those of you who are familiar with the model. Okay, so it's stated as an algorithmic result, but there's a caveat. For, to execute that algorithm, agents need to know what their fair shares are. So each agent individually should be able to solve this problem. So here's my value. I know that the cake will be cut with a blunt knife. So what is the best way for me to cut this cake? Right? And it turns out that this is a difficult problem, right? So in fact, we can show that this is not possible to achieve by any algorithm in the standard Roberts and Webb's model, right? So no algorithm can actually compute agents MMS shares. Okay, and that's a fairly strong impossibility result that holds if we only just have two agents. And you may wonder if this is some weird trick based on valuations being equal to zero at some points. No, so these holds evaluations are kind of always non-zero. Okay, so how can we get around it from a computational perspective? Well, 
And so here is one observation. Given an agent and the number R, we can decide if that agent's S separated MMS share is at least R, right? And we can decide that simply by attempting to cut the cake with a blunt knife into pieces with a value at least R, right? And then either we succeed or we fail, right? But just cutting greedily tells us whether we can do it or not, right? And based on that observation, we get an approximation scheme for MMS shares, meaning for any value of epsilon, I can decide whether, okay, so here's the statement. So if my MMS share is X, then by doing some sort of binary search, I can find explicitly a cut into pieces of value X minus epsilon for any value of epsilon. And the number of queries I will need for that will scale with one, minus, with one over epsilon. Right, so I can get epsilon approximation in a number of queries that scales with one over epsilon. Right, and then I can plug these approximate values of MMS shares into the protocol for computing an MMS allocation, and I'll also get an approximate MMS allocation. Right, and I can get any degree of precision, and I'll pay for the degree of precision by the number of queries, but the price will be fair. Right, so inversely proportional to the error. Right, and another result that we have, which is surprisingly complicated and somehow takes several pages in the paper, is that we can compute MMS shares in case agents have piecewise constant valuations that are given to us explicitly. Right, so if we are given for each agent a collection of intervals and the value of agents density on that interval. Right, and then it turns out that we have to set up a sequence of linear programs to decide kind of on which of these intervals there cuts will fall, kind of both ends of each interval will fall, right? And that turns out to be a surprisingly tricky problem, but well, eventually we conquered that. So for this special case, we have a positive algorithmic result. Okay, so we have more results in the paper concerning the linear cake, but now I want to move beyond the linear cake and talk about the three other models, cutting poise, cutting land, and cutting graphs. Okay, so poi is the terminology that is used for circular cake, right? So we were talking so far about linear cake. So assuming that, you know, the leftmost point and the rightmost point are two distinct points. So when we talk about circular cakes, we assume that the torque is a circle. So it's drawn here with uh, something in the middle, but please kind of don't let that confuse you. So what we are cutting is still the boundary of the cake, right? So you can assume that we are cutting it so the allowed cuts are the cuts you use in a normal cake. So you cut it kind of like that from the middle. Okay, so here we have immediately bad news. Maximum fair share can no longer be guaranteed. Right? And here's an easy way to say it. Suppose we have one agent who only likes cherries and there's a small segment with cherries on top and at the bottom, right? And it's very small, very narrow. And we've got another agent who only likes chocolate shavings and there's a small piece of chocolate shavings on the left and a small piece of chocolate shavings on the right. And the knife is actually very, very blunt. So the knife takes out close to half of the cake. So for instance, for the cherry loving guy, so here is uh, how he would compute his MMS share, right? So this uh, whole part here is actually the part that will be destroyed by the cake, uh, by the knife. Right, so the knife is very blunt. It will destroy this whole big part and this whole big part, but it will still leave him two parts with the cherries. So his maximum fair share is actually one half. So he gets one half from this piece with the cherries and one half from this piece with the cherries. Right, and similarly for the chocolate loving guy, so for him also his maximum fair share for the case when the cake is divided between two agents is also one half. Right, but now you can see that you cannot keep both agents happy. Right, so if we give some piece containing chocolate to this agent, then because the knife is so blunt, it will necessarily destroy all the cherries. Right, so we can no longer guarantee MMS. Right, and in fact, what this argument shows is we can't even guarantee an alpha fraction of MMS, so no multiplicative approximation. So for this reason, what we consider instead is original approximation. So the way it's defined is somewhat unusual, so let me walk you through it. So for original approximation, we ask the following. Can each of the N agents get here one out of N plus one separated MMS share? Right? So there are N agents in the game 
but we ask that in their mental experiment, each agent actually cuts the cake into three, into n plus one pieces. So if there are two agents, then when computing what they should be getting, agents cut the cake not in two pieces, but in three. Right? And of course, if you cut the cake into three pieces rather than two, that results in smaller parts. Also, more of the cake will be destroyed by the blunt knife. Right? So the, go, the agents become less ambitious. Right? So they want to get this smaller fraction of the cake. Right? And the question now is whether these less ambitious agents can be satisfied. Right? And it turns out that for the cake, the answer is yes. Right? And the error is just one. So if there are two agents, each of them would have to cut the cake into three pieces in the mental experiment. If there are five agents, each of them would have to cut the cake into six in the mental experiment. And note that the actual allocation for two agents still cuts the cake into two pieces. And the actual allocation for three agents still cuts it into three pieces. Right? So the number of pieces only changes in the mental experiment that defines the MMS shape. Okay, and the reason why this works is we can pick an arbitrary point on the circle, call it zero, and start moving knife from that point. Right, kind of standard moving knife with agents shouting when the part under the knife starting, starting from zero or from the current point is uh, the MMS share. Right, and the reason why this works is that when we are starting at zero, we may be starting in the middle of each agent's MMS piece, right, and thereby we destroy that piece because it's cut into two halves, each of which may be less than the MMS share. But the important point is that for each agent, we destroy at most one part, right? And in the mental experiment, the agents kind of allowed for this one extra part to be destroyed. So it all works out. Okay, not a formal proof, but close enough to that. Okay, unfortunately though, so again, so this is a constructive result, right? So this is something that, if we have agents one out of n plus one shares, we can compute a partition, right? Because it's moving knife with agents shouting. But again, for agents to know when to shout, they need to know the MMS shares, right? And this is problematic. So it turns out that we cannot use the trick we used for the linear cake of getting epsilon approximation by solving this problem, whether an agent separated MMS shares at least R, right? So this. Okay, so let me be precise. So we don't know how to solve it. We suspect it cannot be done algorithmically. So we have a very partial answer for very special case when R is equal one over N. So we know how to answer if an agent can partition the cake into parts with value one over N, meaning the parts destroyed by the blunt knife will be parts with value zero. Right, so that we can do, but for general R, we cannot, for general smaller R. Right, so this approach to getting approximate MMS allocations based on kind of solving this problem is something that we don't know how to implement. Uh, however, there's another approach that works, right? And this approach is epsilon discretization. So what we can do is we can ask each agent to cut the cake into pieces of value epsilon over two to them, right? So to mark these pieces, right? And then we'll find optimal MMS S separated allocation so that the endpoints of each piece are at the endpoints of this discrete grid, right? And that turns out to work and it requires again, one over epsilon queries to get an epsilon precision, right? But so kind of once you cut the cake into these small pieces, once you mark these small pieces, finding the allocation is not difficult. And again, we can plug it into an algorithm. So again, epsilon MMS allocation, epsilon approximation, to this one out of n plus one allocation can be computed. Okay, so now I don't have that much time left, but let me talk very briefly about land division and graphical cake division. So in two dimensions, perhaps not surprisingly, we can't hope to get a constant factor approximation to an MMS allocation, right? And basically you can take the circle example and think of it as a 2D example, right? And it works out. Uh, so now, when we're in the business of dividing lands, let me formulate the problem more precisely. So I start with the land. So you can think of it as a rectangle. You can think of it as an arbitrary shape. I think for, the mo for most of the results, this is not important. So Earl can correct me. Right? And then you can ask, what should be the shape of these parcels of land that you're cutting? Right? And then the answer depends on, uh, then kind of the complexity of our problem depends on the answer to that. If we require all pieces to be axis aligned squares, 
like then what we can prove is that one out of four n minus five separated MMS allocation always exists. So again, what this means is that the n agents, but in his mental experiment, each agent cuts the land into four n minus five squares, right? And kind of with this not very ambitious goal, each agent can be satisfied. So the proof for that proceeds in two steps. So first, we start with each agent separated MMS partition. So it's a partition into squares. We fatten each square into that partition, surrounding by, by a border of bits S over two, and know that after that, our squares are still non-overlapping because they were S separated to start with. Right? And then we look at these fattened partitions for all the agents, sort of throw them all together in a book. And then the crucial observation is that if you look at the smallest of these fattened squares, then it intersects at most four other squares. Meaning if we take that square out and allocate it to a guy who considers it to be worth his MMS share, we destroy at most four other pieces, right? So we destroy more than one, so not very good, four, right? But then we can recurse on that and we lose four pieces at each step, right? And this is how we get this guarantee. Okay. So this idea can be extended from squares to rectangles that are R fat. R fat means that the ratio of two sides is between one over R and R. R here is a real parameter, right? And this is a generalization of this result for squares, right? So we can see how it depends on R. And if you go to arbitrary axis aligned rectangles, then again, we are after an ordinal approximation, but our approximation guarantees are much, much weaker. So for three agents, we get one out of three, which is not too bad. Then for three agents, we get one out of 14, which is less than great, right? But first as we progress for general N, so what we get is an exponential bound, right? So each agent in his mental experiment has to cut the cake into two to the power N plus two pieces, right? And these are upper bounds, which don't look great. And embarrassingly, our lower bounds are something like N plus one. Right, so you can't hope to get perfect allocation, so you can't hope to get one out of n, but we don't have stronger bound that one out of n plus one idea. Okay, so for computational perspective, again, the same problem. So this is also constructive in that if we have agents, MMS partitions, we can pick and choose squares from these partitions to construct an MMS allocation, but computing MMS allocations are difficult. Right, so even the query model for land is not completely obvious. So what we do to handle that is we focus on guillotine partitions, right? So this is a familiar concept in computational geometry. Some also know this as laminar partitions. So let me explain what they are. So in guillotine partition, you start with a guillotine cutting your land in a cut from one side of the square to another. So in this case, a vertical cut, oh, vertical cut, right? And then you continue in the same fashion, cutting the resulting rectangles from one side to another side. Right, so here's another guillotine cut, and here's another one, and here's another one. Right, now here's something that is not a guillotine partition. Right, so note that here cuts don't go from one end of the land to another, right? So they all stop, stop somewhere halfway. Right, so now the good thing about guillotine partition is for them, we can compute approximately MMS shares by dynamic programming. Right, so this recursive structure of cutting land into rectangles lends itself, itself nicely to dynamic programming. And then we can show that uh, guillotine partitions, again, offer an ordinal approximation to non-guillotine partitions. So we lose another factor of 4k squared, but this is still peanuts compared to the exponential error in ordinal approximation we saw in the previous slide. So we can plug in the epsilon approximation for guillotine partitions into approximation for you know, guillotine cuts to non-guillotine cuts, Right, and then we can plug it into our algorithm that looks at agents of MMS partition and constructs MMS allocation. Right, and combining all that, we get an ordinal approximation that has exponential error. Excuse me, uh, excuse yes? me, uh, you, you use guillotine, is this a common term for certain shapes of uh, squares? Where is the guillotine? I didn't see the body and the executioner. I mean, right, wh in what do you mean guillotine? I mean, by guillotine, I mean that it's, it goes from one end point to another, right? So at each point, it cuts the rectangle, it's cutting into two parts, right? So it cuts it cleanly, 
right? So the reason why it's called a guillotine is that it cuts it cleanly. It doesn't stop halfway. It doesn't get jammed, if you will. Right, whereas this cut goes to here and then it gets jammed. It doesn't go all the way to the end. Okay, but there is also the horizontal part on the upper drawing. There is a horizontal cut, which is not complete. Right, yes. Yeah, so what I, I mean that this is a curse. Right, so in the big picture, I can find one cut that goes from top to the bottom. It separates my original square into two rectangles. So the left rectangle here and the right rectangle here. Right, and now this thing is a horizontal part, horizontal cut, horizontal guillotine part, part, horizontal guillotine cut in this rectangle. Right, so recursively each cut kind of is a cut in its rectangle. So if you want the formal uh -huh. definition, I can, so I will define a guillotine no. partition recursively. Okay, okay, thank you. No, no, but I understand. So it's really something you created for, for the purpose of this. Uh, no, so it exists in the computational geometry literature, right? And I think it exists okay. kind of in other literature under slightly different names. So laminar partition is the name that some people may know. So what, I, what I'm really using is that is the recursive structure that kind of in the first step, I cut my rectangle into two different rectangles and they are in turn cut, right? So there's a tree okay. of the cuts, if you will, right? And here okay. there's no Thank such you. tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that was all I wanted to say for land, right? Let me say maybe a couple of words about graph division. So the model here is a graphical cake model. So instead of defining it formally, so let me show you in a picture what I mean by it. Right, so we are dividing kind of the entire edges of the cake, right? So all, all of the graph is edible, not just the vertices, but the, all the edges, right? And they all have some values, right? And for graph, we assume monotone and not necessarily additive valuations, right? And some results from that paper, perhaps not surprisingly, if the cake is a forest, an MMS allocation always exists. So I had an earlier paper some years ago when there was a similar result for the cutting a discrete forest when the value was all sitting in the vertices. But a similar result holds when the entire cake kind of is edible, not just the vertices, but the technique is different, right? So the surprising part is not the result. The surprising part is the proof technique in that it's not quite moving knife, right? And they explain why it cannot be moving knife. So moving knife would say, let's start from all the leaves simultaneously, try to cut a piece that is good for some agent, give that piece to the agent and continue, right? And here's where it can get problematic. So if I have this simultaneous moving knife starting from all leaves, right? So maybe the first piece I identify will be this yellow piece, right? And I attempt to cut it, right? But what may happen is that maybe this was the maximum partition of the purple agents, right? And maybe this part is S over two and this part is S over two. So the purple partition in itself is well separated, but maybe this part is very short, only S over three. Right, so when I cut off the yellow part, so together with it, to keep everything separated from the yellow part, I'll have to take out this part and I'll have to take out this part, right? And I will have to discard both purple pieces, right? So I allocate one piece to the yellow agent, but I discard two pieces from the partition of the purple agents, right? And that, that is problematic for my inductive argument to work, right? So we have to be careful to avoid that situation. So the argument is more subtle than moving knife, but still works. Right, and for general cakes, what we can do is we can turn, for general graphs, yeah, we can, what we can do is we can turn them into trees. So F, V, S here is feedback vertex set, right? So in, now in his mental experiment, each agent, instead of cutting a cake into N pieces, will have to cut them into number of pieces that is N plus the size of the feedback vertex set for the graph. Feedback vertex set is the number of vertices you need to delete from the graph to make it a cyclic. And then the argument is basically, you start with a graph, you remove a feedback vertex set together with S over two along each adjacent edge, right? And this works if each, if the length of each edge is at least S, right? And the reason why you need that is if you cut in this way, then when you delete the vertex, you delete parts of the adjacent edges, but you don't go as far as to hit other vertices. Right, so the part you delete always looks like this star, right? So you may also be deleting a vertex here and the star from this, from this direction, but they're not going to overlap. Right, 
so by deleting those, you are going to turn your graph um, into a into a forest, right? And then you can apply the first theorem, right? And this condition ensures that when you're deleting your feedback vertex set, you destroy it at most feedback vertex set number of pieces, right? So these two parts can be put together. So to summarize, so ours is the first use of MMS in continuous setting, right? And that's another argument that I think by now has been made by another by a number of authors that maximum fair share is a robust version of the notion of proportionality that works in many settings where proportionality doesn't, but works kind of for similar reasons, for moving knife reasons. So there are lots of open problems. So in particular, we have gaps between upper and lower bounds, especially for land, but also further open problems, right? And I think this is an exciting area and there is more to be done here. So let me stop here, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edith. And uh, let me see if there are questions in the room. Oh. Yes, I'll give you the... Uh, thank you, Edith. Uh, it is Feder. I uh, have a question about a slightly different perspective on uh, this cake cutting with uh, separation. So if we imagine a standard model uh, without separation, uh, but with uh, uh, connected pieces, then there is a gap between what we can get uh, algorithmically, for example, using this moving knife procedure, and what we can prove using topological methods like uh, Sperner's lemma. Uh, do you expect that there is a similar gap in, in your setting with separation? Uh, so it's entirely feasible, but it's not, it's not a kind of result that we have. So I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think any of our results of this flavor, maybe Earl can correct me. With separation, the gap starts even earlier with the, the fact that you cannot compute the maximum share algorithmically. So it cannot make it easier. Uh, we, do have, we do have results about uh, NV3 cutting with separation. So, so we have uh, an extension of this existential result using Sperner lemma to the setting with separation. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, one more question. This is Konstantin. And so in the last part of your talk, when we are considering graphs, why I can't just rearrange graph into a line, just pick all the, all the edges and just make a line out of them? What goes wrong? Uh, so what goes wrong is when you are doing that, you are not faithfully capturing the concept of separation, uh, right? So when you so say, let me go back to this star I had here, right? So you have these three segments, then you start moving them around. So what will be separated when you move them in kind of into a line is not necessarily separated in my original graph. Right, so okay, both so contiguity and separation break down when you try to transform graphical cake into linear cake. Okay, thank you. One last, I mean, I have my own last question. Uh, in the beginning, when you were giving us those counter examples with bananas, with cherries, you used an enormous separation zone. I mean, so if you think of the model in slightly more realistic terms, when the, you know, the separation zone is small, then the natural uh, analog is a slightly different, but very related model in which, um, you impose a minimal size to the shares. You see, uh, if, you, if you have a small S and then you say, okay, my shares should all be of at least size 2S, let's say if we are on the interval. So it's not exactly the same model, but it's very... Yes, sorry, there, there was a some interruption but you, did you get my question i mean the, has this model with minimal size been studied uh, somewhere by you or others so again not to the best of my knowledge but yes i'm happy to defer to earl here so i think he has something to say i, I think the, the, there is a paper from 2011 i think by uh, by the group of uh, ariel procaccia and the Karagianis. Uh, but they, they studied exactly this model where there is no separation, but each piece must have 
and you, you can have disconnected pieces, but each part of your disconnected piece must be of, must be of a certain size. So if you get disconnected pieces, each part should be at least two meters, for example. Uh, yes, but uh, I, don't, I don't think they continue this. It was only one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'll ask you for the reference offline. Okay, well, thank you very much to uh, Edith and uh, Arkady and everybody participating. I'm glad that we finally seem to be in control of our technology. So mm -hmm. now we are going to break for uh, almost half an hour of coffee or whatever you want to drink in your <laughs> different parts. And we will see you after the break, uh, 11 the time, I think. 11.50 on the dot, uh, um, Moscow time. Uh, well, you have to adapt to that. Two hours less in the UK and in Israel is the same time as Moscow. Okay, Israel time, Moscow and Israel time. Thank you.